We are going to talk about Open Canvas uh, and this is another exercise that basically helps you think through in a structured way what you're going to be doing um, by forcing you to fit all of your ideas into a tiny A4 sheet. <laughs> um, so yeah, Open Canvas allows you to think through your project strategy and there are also some examples available and we will ask you to actually finish this on, on your own after the call. And as I mentioned, we will be showing this statement uh, many different times with different sections of it bolded each to each time as we go through. So here we're talking about designing our projects uh, that empower others to collaborate with inclusive communities, but it's specifically the design that we're thinking about here. And the other, uh, what's the word slide that will become very familiar here is the, um, like I mentioned earlier, focus on the design within the Mozilla Open Leadership Framework. So we're talking about helping people understand, share and participate and feel included. Uh, but I will get on to what the Open Canvas actually is, which is perhaps the most exciting bit of this. So it looks something like this. Uh, we have a link, I think it's in the, probably in the HackMD notes, you'll be able to see a link to that. Um, and what this does is it provides you a really structured way to think about what the uh, product that you're creating is and the community that will be involved both contributing and consuming it. Um, and moving on to the next slide, here are some examples. We can talk through this a little bit more. So um, you can work through this in a sort of nice little flow way to think about the things. But if you get stuck on any given box, it's also okay to skip one and then come back to it later. Uh, so looking on top left, we talk about the top problem or problems that you want to solve with the project that you're working on. Uh, so if I was to do this, for example, for OLS, the top problem we might want to solve would be the lack of openness in the scientific community. Uh, the solution for this, uh, you think about what the solution, and again, if there's more than one problem, you might want to put more than one item in this box. Uh, for OLS, I guess our answer to solving the problem will be to create a program that allows other people to learn more about openness and also to share it with others. Then how will we measure success? And since I'm doing this on the fly for OLS, I'm almost in a minor panic here. What do I, how, do we, how do we measure OLS's success? I'll say, given that we have a much bigger cohort for round two than round one, that this looks like some measure of success. So if we look at counting the number of people who are participating, um, and the number of mentors and experts that we have on board, if we keep on seeing that climb um, or at least remain the same rather than uh, shrink, then I think we are doing really well. Uh, for your project, this will obviously be something else. <laughs> um, resources required, so this might be that you need uh, people's time, it might be that you need technical support, it might be skills that you need, it might be infrastructure, it might be lab space. There are a lot of different things that actually the resources that you might be looking for could be, so it really depends on what your project is. Um, and then moving on from here, you start thinking, okay, so this is roughly what I want to design, and now let's start thinking about the people. And so you can start thinking about the contributor profiles. And so this will be people who are actually helping out with what you're doing. And you want to think who, who they are, what they might like to do, um, how they might like to contribute. Um, and like we mentioned earlier, you may want to be thinking about the people who have the expertise that came from the resources required section. And then you start thinking about the user profiles. So these are the people who are actually consuming what you're creating. These may be the same people as the contributors or they may be other people. It really depends on what you're designing. Um, and then you also start thinking about the channels. So now that you know the people that you're going to be working with, both the people creating the work and the people who are consuming it, you can start thinking about how you will get these new contributors and how you'll get the new users. And again, it's okay if these uh, groups overlap as well. There's, you don't have to, they might be distinct people or they might not. Um, and once you've thought through all of those, maybe you have a unique value proposition. So this is um, perhaps reflecting back on that vision, uh, the the statement that we've just been working on. Maybe you want to tweak it or maybe you just want to bring that uh, mission and vision statement right in here. Um, and I remember I was asked to do this. I sort of thought, okay, this looks a bit tedious, but by the time I'd actually worked through what I could put in each box and discussed it with my mentor, I found it really useful. Like I thought really critically about my project and the things and the people that I needed to bring on board. So I would highly recommend spending some time thinking about this and going through it with other people. Um, and if you're not sure, bouncing it off other people, like maybe in the OLS chat, for example, is a really good way to help you think critically through the bits that you may be struggling with. 
Um, okay, I think it's going to ask me on my slides to walk through on all the stuff that I've just done, but I'll use that as a moment to have a really quick recap. So left side, we're talking about the thing that we're creating. Right side, we'll be talking about the people. Um, talking about the problems we want to solve, the solution uh, on the way that, we, that you want to apply to that problem, the ways to measure that success, uh, and then thinking about the resources that you need to get there. Once again, think about the contributor profiles, what types of contributors, um, and what sort of personalities, people, backgrounds they may have. Um, Right, I'm going to skip that slide because I'm not sure what to say about that one. <laughs> and then also think about your users um, and the channels that you may have to get them. Yeah, I'm just going to stop repeating this because I think I went through it when I was just looking at the big slide. Um, and here we also have an example open canvas here that is looking about contributorship badges for science. So this is just working through some of the demos, for example, as well. So uh, if you look at the top, we're looking at lack of recognition uh, for certain contribution types. And the, the solution here was to give people badges to gamify it. Um, and for, in this case, the metrics that we had was the number of publishers using the badges and the number of badges rewarded. Uh, in the bottom left, you can see some of the resources. You can see someone said, we're going to use some free hardware, a Heroku process. Um, that's just a type of server. They've talked that they also need resources to develop this, to design this, and also networking resources. So publishers and orchids, people who are going to buy in to actually using these badges. So some of the different types of resources you might need. Uh, moving over to the community profiles, that's on the left. We've got contributors, might be developers at publishers and at Orchid. Um, and then also that you have researchers who care about the idea of these contributions and maybe want to code or want to get the badges. Uh, moving upwards one box, you can see the user profile, the user will be publishers, researchers, and once again, it might be ORCID. Um, and then the channels for these people, you're looking at a buy-in from an employer. Um, so you, it's, it's, I guess if you want these badges to matter, then you probably want your employers to care about the badges as well. Um, so this is thinking critically about who's going to be contributing and how, uh, as well as users who, um, and who may want new features. And then you can reflect back onto the user profiles as to who those users are. Uh, and then we have some uh, user channels, and this is looking mostly at social media and it talks at ways to get these people. And then finally, moving all the way back up to the top, the, the top right square, we have a unique value prop proposition after having thought through this. So the unique value is issuing badges to credit authors. Um, and that the author roles may also be on your papers. And so these are the reasons that people might want to buy into this. So I hope, hopefully that sort of elucidates how the open canvas can help you think through a given pro, uh, problem. And if you wish to run your op own open canvas, there's also a short link here, bit.ly slash OLS dash open dash canvas. Uh, but I think there's probably a link in the hack and D notes as well.